think your emotions are going to be like Saturday? Uh, it's going to be tough to, to keep them in. I mean, uh, my mom asked me last week about signing up for um, the, the senior day festivities. That was the first time I even like thought about how I'm going to be a part of that. I mean, I've been a part of a lot of teams, a lot of senior days, I've seen guys walk out there with their families, um, taking in kind of the last moments playing in their home stadium, both at Penn State and here. And um, it's emotional just watching those dudes. And so I can't even imagine how I'm going to feel, but uh, it's a matter of using it for motivation, but not letting the emotions get the best of me and, and bringing myself back to neutral and just kind of approaching this like, like any other game. Is it also, how can emotions help you all you kind of bring it in, in, in a rivalry game atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the fact that it is a rivalry game is as much motivation as we need. Um, that we had a nice little uh, motivational video and team meeting on Monday, just kind of like videos throughout the years of different things that have happened in this game and just how much it means to the to our team. And uh, along with it, the bolt bit. I mean, it's a, a win get, is uh, very important for us to get to a higher echelon bowl game that we know we're capable of achieving. So I mean, <coughs> The, the, the rivalry alone, though, to be a part of a rivalry is fun, and I think that'll give the guys motivation to, to get after it this week. How much has your life changed since you committed to Kentucky in the transfer? A lot, a lot. I mean, I was thinking in this time of Thanksgiving, I'm thinking about the things I'm thankful for, and one of the first things I think about is just, I mean, this community here, the people here, the, the coaching staff for believing in me here, the, the, the team for rallying around me and um, trusting in me to be their guy, be their leader. Um, the, the community for just welcoming me with open arms. Um, could have gone a little, very differently when, I, you know, when you entered that transfer portal. So if, if it weren't for Kentucky, who knows where I'd be? Who knows where um, the future looks like for me? So, I mean, um, just crazy to think how differently um, my life was a couple of years ago compared to now. And I'm very thankful for all the people that have helped me get to where I am. When you first got here, how long did it take you to kind of pick up from your new teammates how big a deal this game is right away i mean it, especially it was mostly fans i think it was mostly fans in the off season like finding out that i play quarterback here and then uh and then you want to you want to put it back up or you <laughs> but it's yeah it was mostly fans just like in the off season saying like chopping it up and then at the end ending it with better beat louisville this year better beat louisville you know and uh it was cool to realize how much it meant to the fans and how much it means to us. And watching the, <coughs> the games in the, in the past years, the TV copies of games in the past years, um, of the, the kind of little things that have gone down chippiness wise throughout the two teams. It's it's always fun to be a part of those those types of games. So I'm not going to be throwing any punches, but it's cool. It's fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. What's this rivalry mean to you now that you've been a part of it? It means a lot. I mean, it's 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 important to remind ourselves that how much it means to the fans and how much it means for just the pride of the fans for each for each side. I mean, um, Louisville's hour and change away from here. There's a lot of people that are really good friends that are Louisville fans and Kentucky fans, and it's a matter of who has those bragging rights for, the, for that year. It's been us for the last few years, but you have to, you have to earn that every single year. Um, and we want to make sure that our Kentucky fans can continue to have that. Well, you had a lot of fun in last year's game. Camels down in the end zone, that kind of stuff. Do you have to wipe that out of your mind, or can you use that for motivation? How do you approach that? Uh, I mean, if anything, I know that they're watching that. You know, like I know that they're watching. They're watching us um, doing those things to them and using it as motivation. So we know that they're going to be uh, fired up and ready to, to to give it to us. And um, because of that, we have to make sure we're ready. You know. Um, I, don't, I mean, it doesn't really affect anything, but if anything, I can, you can kind of twist it and think about it that way um, because it has been a few years since um, they've got that win against us, and um, you know that they're, they're fired up to, to go out there and, and play their, play their butts off. You face a couple of teams, a couple of defenses this year that just throw a lot at you, throw a lot of blitzes, different stuff like that. How do you, do you feel better prepared for that now that you've, you've run through kind of the gamut of the full season? Yeah, no, I think especially like up front, our offensive line, like, as we've gone throughout the season, all the different looks that we've been able to see as a, as a group and as a unit, um, it prepares them to, to go out there and to just play reactionary. Um, it's easy when it looks the exactly how you uh, practiced it in, the, in, in practice, but um, there's always new things. There's always things that we didn't expect to see in certain situations, um, just like there was a, against Georgia last week. But I mean, you can tell that they've just gotten so much better throughout the year. And um, I mean, if they're able to handle that front, 
Um, they can handle anybody. But I mean, Louisville moves around their defensive front, a lot of different twists, a lot of different movements that um, do make it difficult. So I mean, those guys got to be locked in all week on their keys, um, on their assignments. And, uh, and it's on me to also get out and make the right play, whether it's thrown away or avoiding sacks when possible. What was working so well Saturday with some of those long downfield passes? It seems like things really started to click in that second half, especially. Yeah, I mean, um, the one, the, the, the one that, that I ruled out and threw back, we tried to dial that up earlier in the game, and they brought a, brought a blitz off the edge, so I had to dump it down to Dane. And that's a play that we've been trying to run for a while, and then we're able to get that one back up, and Barian runs a great route. It turns the safety around, and I pull him down, and he makes the play. And um, the next one, we'll play action backed up, just situationally with the shell that we were seeing, and we knew that that safety would come down and possibly play the run. And once Barian gets behind him, I knew it was just a kind of wash type of ball. and. Um, it's just, it's, it's awesome when plays play out, both of those plays played out exactly how we thought they were going to against that exact look. And it sucks when you when you call a shot play, when you know you have a chance at bumping it downfield and, and, uh, and making a big play, and then it's not the look. But that's, a, that's what makes great quarterbacks great quarterbacks. That's what makes um, great receivers great receivers, understanding that um, you're not always gonna get the big play. You have to act and make decisions and to play to put yourself in the best position to get another shot up at some point, so. Your coaches have said this is might be the best your legs have felt all season. How, how much does that unlock for you here, here late in the year with, with the offense and what you were able to do moving around? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're going to go too crazy in terms of the game plan and changing our, our philosophy. Um, but it's cool for me to kind of feel a little better and to just, uh, especially throughout practice, um, to move around a little better and to kind of make my movements a little more, a bit more game-like with just uh, how explosive I'm able to be. Um, still not 100% there, but I mean, uh, a little progress is good and uh, hopefully I have some opportunities to, to use my legs a little bit this weekend. Well, you yeah. mentioned playing for a better bowl game. Do you intend to play in the bowl game? I don't know. I mean, this is something that I haven't even thought about. I want to get through the season and then sit down with my family and um, talk to Coach Stoops and all that about. So, I mean, I know people are wondering about that, but I, I really have no idea. I haven't paid too much mind to it. Well, on the foot, I mean, everybody talks about it. Well, your movement and your running, but did it affect your throwing at all? Yeah. Or your mechanics on how you throw the ball? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I was talking to Coach about it, and it's it's easy easier for him to see as just someone as an outsider kind of watching me in practice. And um, I think it's mostly like in practice when I'm just planning and stepping, just that weight on that front side. Um, because of the pain, like it's easy for me to not put as much kind of weight on that plant foot and be behind, and then it turns into just a lot more of an arm throw opposed to using my lower body. So uh, this week's been a point of emphasis for me to just kind of keep a good base and to keep that stride and that, that uh, balance between my front and back side um, a little bit more consistent to, to keep the stress off of my arm and keep my arm angle consistent. But it'll be interesting after the season to evaluate myself and kind of see how that changed or how it stayed consistent um, and how I can how I can make that more consistent um, this off season. So um, trying to fix it now, but it's tough to do those things mid season, but I do think it has affected it a little bit. Thank you.